In this lesson, we'll review what happens when parents' ownership in subsidiary changes while it still retains control. A few things to keep in mind while we go through today's lesson. When parents' ownership in the subsidiary changes while it still retains control, then parents' ownership interest is changing because it wants it to change. Parent controls the sub. Whatever sub does that makes parents' ownership percent change is at the parent's direction. Because parent tells the sub what to do. Parent is in control. There's a lot of room for abuse in these kinds of transactions. So when parents' ownership percent changes and it still retains control, the entire transaction stays within equity and no gain or loss is recognized. Remember, for financial reporting purposes, the company is always trying to make its income bigger so that the stock price goes up, so that bonuses go up the whole nine yards. But for those places that are subject to abuse, the accounting rules rein it in. Remember, we're accountants, we're doom and gloom gotta be conservative. So as long as parent retains control, when parent's ownership interest changes, it stays inside of equity. With that in mind, let's go to the board. Yeah. Platinum owns 90% of the 10,000 outstanding shares of Silver's common stock on December 31st, Y1. On that date, Silver's stockholders' equity was 150,000, consisting of 100,000 no-par common stock and 50,000 of retained earnings. On January 2, year 2, Silver issued 2,000 previously unissued shares for 24,000 to various outside investors. And as a consequence of this transaction, Platinum's ownership share was reduced to 75%. Start with the picture. P, S, and 90%. 90% of 10,000 outstanding shares equals 9,000 shares. And this is December 31st, Y1. On that date, Silver's stockholders' equity was 150,000. Now on January 2, year 2, Silver issues 2,000 new shares for 24,000. Let's do Silver's journal entry. First, start with what's easy. Start with cash. Silver received $24,000. Cash increasing, that's a debit. What's the other side of the entry? Well, why is silver getting cash? Because it issued stock. Common stock increasing, that's a credit. Note, generally only par value goes into common stock and the rest goes to APIC. But here, this is no par common stock. So the whole 24,000 goes into common stock and there is no APIC. All right, at this point, let's see what happened to platinum's ownership as a result of silver's new issuance. Platinum did not purchase any of these new issued shares. So Platinum still owns 9,000 shares. The only thing that's changed is that the total outstanding shares is not 10,000 anymore. It's 10,000 plus the 2,000 newly issued shares. That equals 12,000. Platinum's 9,000 shares over Silver's 12,000 outstanding shares equals 75%. Platinum now owns 75% of Silver's common stock. How should Platinum account for this change from 90% to 75%? The first thing to note is, does Platinum still have control? Even after Silver's additional issuance of shares, Platinum owns 75%. That means Platinum retains its control over Silver. If Platinum retains control even after Silver issued additional shares, then the rule is everything gets recorded within equity and there's no gain or loss. Okay, so let's see what that means. First, set up for our calculations. Calculate Platinum's share of Silver's equity both before and after the January 2nd issuance. Before the issuance, Silver's equity was 150,000 and Platinum's percentage was 90%. 150,000 times 90% equals 135,000. That's Platinum's portion. What about the remaining 10%? For completeness, let's do that amount too. 150,000 times 10% equals 15,000. Now, who's this for? It's not Platinum. Platinum stake is the 135,000. Who else is there? Non-controlling interest. Those are the only two kinds of owners we have here. It's either Platinum as the parent or the non-controlling interest. Now let's go to S's equity after the January 2 issuance. Silver's common stock after the issuance was 100,000 plus the 24,000 for the issuance which gives us a total common stock of 124,000. And there's no information on Silver's retained earnings, so we just assume that it stays the same at 50,000. 124,000 common stock 
plus 50,000 retained earnings equals 174,000 total equity. Now, how much is Platinum's portion? After the issuance, Platinum's percentage is 75%. So 174,000 times 75% equals 130,500. Let's do the remaining 25% for completeness. 174,000 times 25% equals 43,500. Now, who's this attributed to? It's not Platinum. Platinum's stake is the 130,500. Who else is there? Non-controlling interest. Remember, it's either one owner or the other. Platinum as the parent or the non-controlling interest. Okay, we have all of our numbers. How much did Platinum's portion of Silver's equity change from before and after the new issuance? Before, Platinum's share was 135,000. Now it's 130,500. The difference is 4,500. Platinum's share of Silver's equity was reduced by 4,500. Let's do Platinum's journal entry. We reduced Platinum's investment in Silver by 4,500. The investment account is an asset and it's decreasing. That's a credit, 4,500. What's the other side of the entry? We know the amount is 4,500 and it's a debit, but what's the account? Remember the rule. If parent's ownership in the subsidiary changes and parent retains control, everything stays within equity and no gain or loss is recognized. This is a debit and it kind of feels like a loss, but we're not allowed to recognize a loss. We have to stay within equity. So here it is. First, take it out of APIC. And then when there's no more APIC, take it out of retained earnings. Here, it's no par value common stock. So remember, we didn't have any APIC. That means there's no APIC to take it out of. Then we take it out of retained earnings. If you've already reviewed equity, then this may sound familiar. This same method is used for treasury stock transactions. First, take it from APIC. And when there's no more APIC, take it from retained earnings. Let's go back to the question. Which of the following correctly reports this transaction? A, Platinum's investment in silver is reduced by 4,500. This hits it right on the head. All right, let's take a step back and look at what we've done here. Note, all the calculations center around silver's equity. When parent's ownership changes while it retains control, everything stays within equity and no gain or loss is recognized. That means if parent's investment goes up, Think of it like a gain, but we can't call it that. So we put it into APIC. If parent's investment goes down, think of it like a loss, but we can't call it that. So first we take it from APIC, and when there's no more APIC, we take it from retained earnings. That was a tough problem. The AICPA ranked that as one of the more difficult problems. If you got through this question, you're in a good place. Next up, we're going to delve into those intercompany elimination entries recorded in consolidation. This is an area that has been tested on past exams. You don't want to miss out on that. So keep it tuned here. I'm Liz Cho with Test Prep in a Snap.